Hi. Now in this video what I want to do is show you how we can use Newton's experimental law when it comes to a particle hitting a fixed wall. We'll also discuss the rebound speed when a ball hits the ground. Now suppose we have a particle and it's moving perpendicular to the wall just before it hits it. And this is a smooth fixed wall. If its speed before it hits the wall is u and when it rebounds its speed is v, then we can apply Newton's law of restitution or experimental law to get e. Because e will be equal to the speed of separation and that's going to be v minus zero because the wall's at rest. So that's going to be v minus zero divided by the speed of approach which will be u minus zero. So what we've got here is that it follows that e will be equal to v divided by u. The speed of rebound divided by the speed of approach. Or you could multiply both sides by u and you find that the speed of rebound is always equal to e times the speed of approach. So let's just put this in practice. I've got a couple of questions here which are fairly typical of this kind of uh, idea. In number one we've got a particle, it collides normally, that's at right angles then, with a fixed vertical wall with an initial speed of 10 meters per second. It rebounds with a speed of 5 meters per second and we've got to find the value of the coefficient of restitution e. So to do this what I'd want to do is to construct a before and after diagram. So uh, we'll have a before and after. So we've got a particle moving towards a fixed wall. We'll have our wall like this and before it hits the wall it's moving at 10 meters per second and after it hits the wall it moves away from the wall with a speed of 5 meters per second. So that's the kind of typical diagram I would draw for something like this. And so E, coefficient of restitution then, would be equal to the speed of rebound divided by the speed of approach. In other words, 5 divided by 10. We'll just put that as V over U, but essentially it's going to be 5 over 10. And that's going to equal a half. Remember E, the coefficient of restitution, is always a value between 0 and 1 inclusive. OK, so always a good check. Right, let's do question 2 now. We'll just divide that off there. Now, with the second example, we've got a small sphere falls from a height of 8 meters onto a smooth horizontal plane. It then rebounds to a height of 5 meters. And what we've got to do is find the coefficient of restitution between the particle and the plane. Well, again, I'd want to set up a diagram just to look at this. So uh, we'll have our ground, say, there. And we've got our sphere is released, say, from up here. And it's released from rest. So we'll just put that in as being released from rest. I'll put that as 0 meters per second. And it's released then from a height of 8 meters. So pop that in there as 8 meters. Now this is going to fall freely now under the acceleration due to gravity. So it's then going to hit the ground and it's going to have a speed that we've yet to find. Let's just say that we call it u1 when it hits the ground. And then as soon as it hits the ground, it's going to bounce off up the ground. OK, we'll call this v1. And it's going to rise a height of 
five meters. So we'll just pop five meters in there and say that it just rises to that height there, five meters, okay? Something like that. And we better mark in the acceleration due to gravity, okay? That's going to be 9.8 meters per second per second. So I've got to get the speed of approach, U1, work out the speed of rebound, and then I can work out the coefficient of restitution E. And to get these two speeds, what I'm going to need to do is apply my SUVAT-based equations. So first of all, we're going to look at the downward motion here. And I'm going to take downwards as positive. So I just mark that in there. And we're looking at a SUVAT-based equation, S-U-V-A-T. Okay, so S the displacement, well downwards is positive, so that's going to be 8. I won't put the units in here, okay, because we haven't got much space here. So 8 uh, meters that is really. U, the initial velocity, well that's going to be 0. V is what we're trying to find, it's U1. We'll mark that in green here, just as U1, okay? And the acceleration is going to be positive 9.8. Time, we don't need the time, okay? So we can afford to leave that out. So what equation would get us the U1? Well, it's going to be using V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. And if we use that, the V is going to be U1, so it's U1 squared equals the initial speed squared, well that's going to be 0, plus 2AS, so that's going to be 2 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by the displacement S, which is 8. And if you work this out, this comes to 156.4. So that's 156.4. And then to get U1, therefore U1, it's going to be the square root of 156.4. Now I won't work that out, okay? We'll just leave it at that. And that'll be measured in meters per second. So I've got U1. I now need to get V1, the speed of rebound. And what I'm going to do now is just consider the motion upwards from here to here. Now when it gets to the top here, okay, let's just mark that in again, it's going to come to instantaneous rest at the top there. We'll just put a little arrow in there just to show that that's zero when we get up there, okay? So on the second stage of motion, I'm going to take upwards as positive now. And again, we're going to do a SUVAT based equation. It's going to be exactly the same one as that actually. So we'll just put our variables in S, U, V and A. We can afford to leave out T. We know we're not going to need that. So what is S? Well S is going to be 5. U is going to be the V1. I'll put that in green there just to highlight that for the moment. V, the final velocity well, that's going to be zero because it comes to instantaneous rest at five meters. And the acceleration is going to be negative 9.8, okay, because it's acting in the downward direction. Negative 9.8. And again, we can use our equation v squared equals u squared plus 2as. But this time, v is going to be zero. So we've got zero equals u squared, which is the v1 squared this time, okay, plus 2 times the acceleration, which is minus 9.8, times s the displacement, which was 5. And if we work this out, this comes to negative 98. Add that to both sides and you got 98 equals v1 squared. So therefore, v1 will be equal to the square root of 98. And that will be in meters per second. 
So I'm now in a position, we'll just come down here in this particular question. I'm now in a position to work out what the coefficient of restitution E is. E will be equal to the speed of rebound divided by the speed of approach. Speed of rebound was the root of 98, so we've got root 98 divided by the speed of approach, which was the square root of 156.4. And if you do that calculation on your calculator, you'll find that you get 0 0.791 and so on. And if we give that to a suitable degree of accuracy, let's say two significant figures, that's going to equal 0 0.79 to 2SF. Okay, well, I hope that gives you an idea of how to handle this type of question and any other examples that you get. I'd like to think that you should be able to model them on a similar kind of idea to this. Okay?